Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Happy Halloween. I thought we'd end this year's Halloween readings with a pick a ghost reading. So you can choose between this white ghost here or the black ghost. And we're just gonna look at general messages from Spirit about this special time where the veil is thin between worlds and you can really divinate and access some special information. Ooh. <laughs> okay, so keep that in mind. My readings are timeless, so whenever you see this, this message is for you. So even though the veil is thin at the time that I'm recording around Halloween, no matter when you see it, there's a message here for you that you're able to access some information in ways that you typically would have a little bit of a harder time doing, okay? So, so use that to your advantage. Before I begin, I just want to thank everybody for your support here on the channel and also for indulging me in all these Halloween costumes. <laughs> I know I've had a lot um, and some of them have been pretty creepy, but I've had so much fun in doing it. So thank you for being here, showing up for it, showing up for the show, so to speak. Hopefully the readings were helpful as well. I did notice a common theme between my costumes, and that is that they all had a trickster element to it or reference to a trickster in some way or another. And I feel like this is a message for the collective. I told Pisces about this already. There's something in these costumes in this message that I'm portraying um, where there's some hidden knowledge that you have within about a particular situation. And the knowledge that you have within is hidden um, in your trickster element. Now, everybody has a trickster character within them, okay? It's an archetype. And so there's something that maybe you've been tricking yourself with, okay? <laughs> Not seeing things clearly, or perhaps you've been tricking another. I don't know, you take it how it resonates. But spirit wants you to get to know that trickster quality of yourself. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. Tricksters are divine teachers. They're also very clever, very clever, very smart. So get to know your inner trickster. And that is the way that you will empower yourself so that you will not get tricked by another. Okay, so the best way to avoid getting tricked is to know your inner trickster. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, group one, the white ghost. Group two, the black ghost. I feel like you could pick more than one reading if you want. Uh, there are probably messages in both for you. Okay, group one, those of you who chose the white ghost, let's see what spirit has to say to you for your message, for your Halloween message. Okay, we need five cards here, Spirit. We're going to use Oracle and Tarot. Let's see. Ooh. Ooh, these messages are popping out for you. Yes, they are. We have an extra one. Okay. <laughs> and we'll get the Tarot too for group two. Group two, interesting. Group one. Maybe there's a message in group two for you. Group one. Okay. That came out really quickly, okay? So I feel like this might be a little bit urgent for one reason or another. What does spirit want you to know right now? We have the rat. Somebody could be trying to take something from you. Now, I'm not saying they actually are or they're being successful, but there's an energy here. Six of Swords. I'm hearing somebody's waiting, awaiting your re- uh, re revival. I was going to say arrival, but revival. Someone's waiting for your revival. Oh boy. What? Missing pieces. So what does this energy want from group one? Open up. Somebody wants you to open up about something. Now, this could be in any context of your life. What's the selfish energy? Uh, 
Okay, collect it. Power and control. I feel like someone feels as though they've lost power and control in a situation. You've let it go, okay? You've let something go. You've been grieving something or you've just, you know, said that hurt, that sucked. I didn't get that job, but, you know, the relationship didn't work or I lost a friend or whatever. But I know it's in my best en entrance, I heard. <laughs> Interesting. My best interest to let it go, to let it be. But with entrance coming through, I feel like this is your higher self knowing that your entrance into your next level of spiritual growth, the entrance into that portal, into that gateway I'm hearing, is to let something go. But somebody else has been perceiving your energy of letting something be as selfish. They want you to open up. Maybe they want you to open up about your grieving even. How have you been feeling about this situation? So they're trying to take some energy from you. Whew. Okay. Skeleton strength. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's like your spiritual strength or your healing energy. You know, I, I said this to Taurus and I'm being reminded of this now. It's like somebody stabbed you in the back with something <laughs> with something okay someone stabbed you in the back and it's like you took out that dagger and now you have it as a weapon it's like somebody thought they were hurting you but they just gave you more strength and now they want some of that strength for themselves they're missing that in their life and with the six of swords showing up it's like they're waiting for you to arrive to them now, I don't know why this person's waiting on your arrival. This seems so specific. I was not thinking we were going to get these messages, but here we are. <laughs> Just me and you. Okay, this person has some kind of attachment here to you. Old times. Yeah. Okay. I'm seeing manipulation with power and control. Because they're coming out, help here. Because they're coming out as the rat, I feel like they're looking at you, they're noticing something in you, and they want that thing they see for themselves. Now, it might be an unconscious desire to understand how you healed so they can heal themselves. Tell, tell me more about this person, Spirit. Interesting. You know, <laughs> this is this thing about the trickster once again. And we're in between eclipses right now, so we're clearing out a lot of energy. And I'm going to do another uh, reading for the lunar eclipse, so pick a card. And I'm glad the solar eclipse uh, pick a card resonated with so many of you. But we're clearing out a lot of energy at this time. And so things are going to come up for review. Things are going to come up that you're trying to get rid of, that don't want to be let go of. These could be energies within yourself even. You know, the rat could represent an aspect of yourself. It could be your inner trickster. It doesn't necessarily have to be this um, outside energy or outside person. But I feel like for a lot of you, it is. It just feels that way to me. Page of Pentacles could be an earth sign here. Or just somebody who has a lot of growing and learning to do. And I do feel like if this is some kind of karmic situation here, relationship, contract, soul tie, whatever, there is in every soul tie, at least in my understanding, a student-teacher type of relationship. And the best kinds of soul contracts is where that student-teacher role gets switched here, like every so often I teach you this lesson then you teach me that lesson and then you know we go back and forth and we learn from one another and those lessons don't have to be hard or negative but I feel like with this person here you've been in the teacher role for some time here okay and it's like they didn't want to learn something from you in, in whatever way and so you let it be. You said, all right, well, I can't handhold this person. You know, they're going to have to figure out what they want to do for themselves. So I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it be and see what happens. 
And I feel like something else developed in your life or you moved on. So you had some awakening, some awareness about the situation. And now the, the person's like wanting you to, wanting to learn from you in some way. Now, I don't think this is necessarily a conscious realization for this person. It might just be like, you know, I want group one back in some way. You hear the doorbell there? Yeah, I feel like this is incoming, okay? I feel like there's... Um, Eight of Swords. They have some kind of stress around this situation. Okay, that doorbell threw me off there. And it might throw you off too when this when you get a notification I'm hearing about this person. Tell me. Strength. Yeah, again, strength again. Be strong. Like, I'm not going to stop what I'm doing here to go and answer that because I'm not expecting anyone, okay? And I don't need anything right now but to be here with you. And I feel like that's what Spirit wants to say to you too. Don't let this person interrupt you in something that's important for you that you're doing right now. Be strong. You know, if, it, if it's something that requires your attention, you can give your attention when you want to, Okay. Interesting message. Wow. <laughs> okay. How to see through the veil during this next month. So how can you tap into your intuition more? How can you see past anything that might be tricking you or trying to trick you? We have the arrow with the star. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going forward. Uh-huh. So now I'm seeing um, the dagger that was in your back, so to speak, like someone stabbed you in the back or maybe it was just a difficult ending. Maybe there was no malintent, whatever your situation is, you know, whatever put you down. It's like you took that out and in the Taurus reading, Taurus sheathed it and saved it as a weapon to protect themselves. But for you, I'm actually seeing you took it out and you threw it <laughs> like an arrow and, and you used it to shoot for the stars here. You transmuted the energy. You directed the energy. Okay? Like putting in a, putting the dagger in a sheath would have been more like, okay, well, I'll have this here on hand if and when I need it. I don't know what I'll need it for. I don't know when I'll need it, but at least I have it. This is different. This is like, okay, I have this thing and here's I have this energy from this situation and here's what I want to do with it. I'm going to direct it. I'm going to direct this energy. I'm going to take this energy and put it where I want it. And this is towards healing. Okay, this is towards trust in the divine. Beautiful. So keep going with that energy. Shoot for the stars. So cheesy. But I mean, how could you not say that with these cards, right? Set your goals high, set your standards high for what you're doing. Really, the only thing in between you and your success is your own fear and doubts. Okay, let's see. What else What else do you want to say about how to see through the veil in the next month? Why am I only using half of these? Let's see. Let's get the all the tools, astral. Yeah, all the tools you need here. Okay. How can group one see through the veil in the next month? We have overthinking, when the time is right. Give me a couple more. Transform tarot, <laughs> pain. Ooh, use tarot to transform your pain, <laughs> right? <laughs> I love that. Okay, we have illusion at the bottom. I feel like, you know, how you can see through the veil in the next month with tarot coming out. I mean, this is a pretty clear message about how to use um, the energy right now to divinate or what, you know, where to channel that into. So if you're a tarot reader, keep going for that. It looks, keep going with that. Mm. Keep going for that. Okay, so maybe you're, what you're doing, you're on some kind of mission here. You know, you're on a spiritual mission. You're in service, in other words. You're serving the greater good. 
okay, with the star card and the arrow. But use tarot, whether that's watching tarot readings or, you know, divinating yourself, use it to transform pain, okay? Not to ruminate on pain, not to propagate pain, not to intensify your pain. And if it's doing any of those things, then leave it alone. That's really the power of tarot. That's, that's why I'm here, right? <laughs> I want to use this channel and, and this form of divination as a way to help transmute collective pain, collective trauma, collective heartbreak, collective bullshit, you know what I mean? Like to transform it into something beautiful, you know, an energy that is empowering, an energy that knows they got this and they can heal this and, and we got this thing and we could do this and not to overthink about a situation. Remember, tarot is supposed to give you answers, direction, guidance, not more and more questions that get you to overthink. There's also times where tarot doesn't have the answers, okay? And for this question, how to see through the veil during the next month, when tarot doesn't give you the answers you want, don't try to figure them out with your egoic mind or overthink it. Relax and know that you will see what you need to see when the time is right. Sometimes we don't get the answers because it's just not the right time to have them. Or maybe the answer hasn't been settled yet. The energy is still molding, transforming, transmuting. And it needs some time to work itself out until spirit can deliver you something that will be useful for your highest good. That candle is making some noises. Let me just check on it, make sure it's okay. Okay guys, sorry, I just had to have a talk with the candle. It's definitely, um, it's interesting the, what's happening. I've never actually seen this happen with a candle. And this is part of your reading. It's, um, I'd bring it over here, but it's so waxy. It will spill everywhere. It's creating like a, a secondary flame. I don't know if you can see it. And I don't know how it's doing that. I'm sure you, there's a reason, but... There isn't a second wick down there. It's like burning itself, unless a piece of the wick fell. I don't know. But it's interesting how there's another flame beside it trying to burn. See, and I feel like this is the energy. It's like somebody's trying to catch your flame, your light. Somebody's trying to hook in here. But it's dangerous, right? Like that's not the safest thing. Okay, guys, I'm getting like a little nervous about it. So let me just... Blow that out, put a new candle in, and I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, guys, I've changed out the candles there. I want you to really pay attention to what's going on around you at this time, okay? For your own protection, and it's you're always protected, okay? Remember that. Whoever I'm speaking to is very protected, highly protected, but your intuition wants you to stay on top of something. Maybe it's this situation here. It's an easy fix, right? Once you recognize that something's off or something's not right, something could go <laughs> like awire or you just don't want something to happen in a particular way, as long as you notice that, I'm hearing before it's too late, it's an easy fix. I feel like there's something else in that message. What else do you want to say? It says, don't sell your soul, reap what you sow, mirror and turmoil. Taurus, again, maybe some of you want to watch that Taurus reading. I've referenced it a few times here. Okay, we all have Taurus in our chart and the lunar eclipse is coming up in Taurus. Seeing confession here as well. Stay present. Okay. 
so just be careful of how you're divinating, what you're divinating about, where you're putting your energy into. You're very powerful at this time. S somebody is attracted to your strength. Okay, maybe you don't even know this person. I'm not sure. Someone's attracted to your strength and you just got to watch out um, for this person. Okay, can we move on from that message? I feel like we're done there. That was enough, right? That whole thing caught somebody's attention. All right. So how to protect yourself. We have antidote with the moon. Ooh, and it, it was in reverse here. So I feel like the antidote, how to protect yourself is to dispel any illusions, to confront any fears, to recognize anything that might be dangerous or something that could lead to an unwanted event or an unwanted outcome, to address things, to not keep things in a let's wait and see energy. Okay, let's not wait and see. Let's recognize something that isn't going right and change it or something where the energy's off and fix it. Also, how to protect yourself is to go within and look at your own trickster, like I said, but also your own fears. The things that maybe you've been hiding from someone or hiding from yourself. Uh, I'm hearing this, and this isn't going to be for everyone. I just saw three on the clock. Um, you've been hiding something for from someone. Again, not for everyone, okay? But for whoever I'm talking to, you've been hiding something from somebody and you think they don't know it, but they know it, okay? So be prepared to be confronted with it, I'm getting. Interesting. Okay, tell me some more here, Spirit, about how group one can protect themselves. Betrayal. This is a very fascinating, I saw information there. Yeah, it's like someone knows something here. Okay. Logic. We have tear or tear, Pluto, tried and true, options, grow up, offer, and hope. Let's take Pluto. Also feel free to direct the energy as you choose, okay, as you see fit. I don't know what that means for everyone. The letter N and P might mean something to someone. Okay, I wanna know here more about this betrayal energy the world and what's the logic about the devil and Pluto the Sun and the six of wands damn this is a powerful energy here the moon the world the devil the Sun and six of wands okay somebody has definitely healed or moved on from a, a situation, okay? And another energy here feels betrayed by that. I feel like somebody wanted some power in a situation and they didn't realize that the power, how to get that power was to heal and to be honest and to confront their shadow, okay? To bring things out into the open and not manipulate or something like that. And I feel as though you did some of that work, if not a lot of it, some of that shadow work. You gained some strength here, strength coming out twice. There's no doubt about that. And this is not just strength as in like strength of character, you know, strength and energy. This is divine strength. It's major arcana. You know, it's, it's divine. It's a divine lesson in strength and courage. Okay, so you had a lot of courage and it's like this person didn't realize that the power that they wanted or even needed was also inner strength and courage. 
I feel like this person might have used their logic um, over, whew, over hope, maybe, or faith in the divine communication. They didn't communicate with you or with themselves. Keep it simple here. Okay. So the message that I'm getting is how to protect yourself in this situation is, is to attempt to put yourself in this po person's position. Now that's never really possible, right? We can never really know what's going on inside someone else's mind or what they're thinking or how they're feeling exactly, especially if we're intimately involved with them in some way because we can project a lot. But Spirit's saying try to... Two of Wands, see something from a different angle, okay? See how this person might feel betrayed by something you've done, even if you feel like you didn't betray them. Try to consider if, how, if and how they would feel that way, okay? Because it will give you some insight into what they might be desiring here with you. It will bring something, illuminate something to you that's in the shadows right now. It will show you the path to victory in this situation okay wow all right the lamp remembrance interesting with the candle situation we just had what's this person remembering seven of wands Nine of Cups. This person has a very defensive energy. It's like, I want to move on from this energy. I don't even want to read this position anymore, but it's like holding me here. I can't really explain it. Let's clear it out uh, for a second here. It's so intense, all these big energies coming through. It's definitely related to Pluto, this connection or this karmic contract. And Pluto's about power and control. It's also a ruler of Scorpio, so it can be about changes and rebirths here. And the antidote is to bring something out into your consciousness that's being kind of tucked away or hidden within. And it's something about um, trying to see something from another person's perspective, which is also called empathy, right? So it's trying to be empathetic to another person's situation. I feel like, I'm not saying you haven't had empathy, but there's something more that you could understand about how this person acts or reacts or what they might want. And this isn't for you to feel bad for them or to justify anything or to whatever go backwards in time. It's for you to protect yourself. It's to shed light on something, okay? That's as far as I'm gonna go with that. I feel like in the process of doing that, you might have some revelations here about yourself and your own shadow, but that's not the point at this moment, okay? <laughs> Let's keep going, it's very funny today. What do you need to continue on your path? Feather, maybe an actual feather. <laughs> And the hermit, ooh. I'm hearing that line from that movie, The Craft. Um, well, it's not just from The Craft, but you know, the light of light as a feather, stiff as a board. And I'm thinking about that. It's like, keep, keep your energy light in the context, in the context <laughs> where you feel safe. And then maybe you need to be more rigid and stiff in other areas in your life. Make sure that you honor the different parts of your personality 
and that your different strengths. So sometimes we need a more rigid, tough persona in different contexts. It's just necessary. It, it's what gets the job done. And in other areas, we can be very light, open, vulnerable, caring, whimsical, open, you know. And that's, that's what that, you know, that situation might call for that energy. But know which energy to be in, step into, I'm hearing, to put on display in what context. God, I hope this is making sense. It feels like so all over the place. Usually though, when I say that though, those are the readings that tend to resonate the most with people. You might have been seeing feathers recently as well. Pay attention to that. Let's get some more here. For what does group one need to do to continue on their path? Ascension, teach, trouble blocked yes this is what i'm saying it's like in some context you can't teach people by using a a, a strong firm rigid kind of char character okay i'm hearing characterization of the situation and in some contexts, you can't use that open vulnerable soft light as a feather touch either you know, it's going to depend on the energies that you're working with. You may have to shit shape shift. I'm hearing you may, which is a trickster quality. You might have to shape shift in different situations. And we do this all the time anyways, right? Like we wear different hats in different situations. The person we are at work is not necessarily the person we are with our best friend or with our lover or, you know, whatever we change, right? We show different sides of ourselves, And there's something here that spirit's saying, um, in relationship to either this situation that we were talking about with this rat energy or in your personal spiritual practice where you need to be comfortable taking on those different strengths that you have that may be conflictual at times. For example, I'll just use myself as an example. <laughs> so many of you have seen my softer side, right? And I definitely have that. That's, you know, that, and I love that energy. But then there's another side that's like, not, you know, it takes a lot for that to come out, but it's certainly there. And it sometimes it's needed to do a job that needs to get done. And I'm not scared to use that. And neither should you. I feel like that's the message. Don't be scared to be stiff as a board when you need to be. Right? Because that's the whole thing. Light as a feather, stiff as a board. Right? It's like you have to stiffen yourself. You have to make yourself a certain way uh, in order for the energy to lift you. And I'm not saying that you need to be stiff in all contexts. It's just a particular context in which there might be some trouble. Okay, <laughs> whoa. Are you getting this? <laughs> I hope so. Am I getting this? I don't know. <laughs> what should you honor about yourself? The Ten of Cups, Girl and Snake. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's kind of the message there too. It's like... You can shapeshift. You're transformative. Maybe you have a lot of Scorpio or you're connecting with the Scorpio solar eclipse that just happened. And we Taurus came out, which is what the lunar eclipse is going to be in. And re regardless of your gender here, there is an energy of um, knowing when to be vulnerable, soft, open, teachable yourself. And then at other times, when to... Bite. When to bring the fangs out, you know? Or when to hiss and slither away, <laughs> whatever a snake does here. Or when to shed your skin. You know, we have the, the light and the dark. They work together, right? You, you can't have one without the other. 
And this is true for this person you're dealing with too, because they sound like they're in a shadow energy, at least as you've experienced them. And spirit also wants you to recognize that there is a light energy within this person. We saw it with the candle, like they're trying to spark their own light here. I feel like this reading might be somehow connected to that um, reading that was deleted and then I reposted it. For some of you anyways, but if that connection doesn't seem obvious, don't worry about it. Honor your complexity and the many ways in which you do find happiness. Never try to please other people and try to be what other people want you to be. I mean, you already know that. But in the world we live in, it can be really tempting to get sucked into those traps of performing a certain way because it's expected of you or because you're receiving positive feedback for that performance, which might be okay, but don't be scared to pivot out of that and do something different or show up as a different aspect of yourself. You know, if somebody doesn't like it or a group of people don't like it, they can leave. Never leave yourself. Okay. Vulnerability. <laughs> I love it. I feel like for many of you, you have to protect your vulnerability on some level here. Passion. Uh, what else? Success and Leo. There's that strength energy again. I feel like whatever you're passionate about, you're going to have a lot of success in it. There is a vulnerability that's happening, it's being activated in whatever you're doing here that's, that you're passionate about. Maybe you're teaching, I don't know, whatever it is that you're doing. And there is a message here about protecting that vulnerability. I feel like we want a couple more here. Quiet, yeah, yeah, yeah. Competition, ooh. And I'm seeing friends. This might be about a friend of yours here who's in competition with you, wants to, you know, latch on in some way to your expansion here with Jupiter. Disguise. They could be acting as a friend, you know? You, that, you know, this should all be clicking with you. Nothing should be a surprise here in this reading. So take the parts that work for you, right? As And act as messages of confirmation. Okay, let's get two closing messages and then we'll move on to the second group. Closing message for group one. Thank you, Spirit, for that. <laughs> I'm hearing robust. Okay, I didn't think it was robust, but that robust reading, dynamic reading maybe. Rebirth, 31, which is 13 backwards. There's death in all that awakens, for it isn't blissful, nor painless. It's a mighty rising. Oh, flame resurrected. <laughs> oh, flame resurrected. Look at that. Wow. We did resurrect your flame there. Cool. Okay. One more. Cauldron, synergy and healing, protection, jack-o'-lantern. You are protected. You are so protected. Okay, but it doesn't mean you walk through life, you know, carelessly. You have to stay, keep your eyes peeled, your ears open. And it's funny, when I heard all that going on, I heard like the candle at first and it sounded I thought it was Patrick scratching his ear like it sounded like a cat scratching its ear there like which is interesting in and of itself so maybe when your ear itches you should pay attention here to something or your ear rings but there is a message here there is it's, uh, a spirit might be trying to get your attention with something or it's already out there for you to see some kind of warning here for you to diffuse the situation before you know it gets to be not a tower not out of your control for some maybe but it's more of like a nuisance okay group one that's what i have for you i love you so much hopefully that helped happy halloween enjoy this time 
of November, October. It's my favorite time, obviously. <laughs> so enjoy it as well. Okay, and I'm moving to group two. Group two. Let's see here. Okay, hi group two. I'm just clearing the energy out because group one's reading had some intense energies come through. So those of you who chose this black ghost, let's see what message comes through for you. Let's get the tarot and, oh, let's begin with these cards. I'm gonna use oracle and tarot here for group two spirit guides. What message do we have? I saw the time card there. There might be something about time to clear something. Okay, let's get the cards on the table. <laughs> the cards just literally stayed on the table there. I saw this. Trumpet, time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> When you get a message, don't doubt it, is a message for you. Because I saw that come through and I was like, no, we should really get them on the table. And here they are. Okay, so spit, this is also for you. Trust um, that you're being given the right answers when you get the message. We only needed five, so we have some extras here. Huh? Okay, interesting. Let's see. Two more. For group two spirit. Messages for group two. I'm hearing that um, poem from Alice in Wonderland, the carpenter and the walrus, or is it the walrus and the carpenter? The time has come to speak of many things. I, don't, I have no idea what the rest of that is. This seems significant though. The sun was shining on the sea, shining with all its might. He did his very best to make the billows smooth and bright. And this was odd because it was the middle of the night. The moon was shining sulky, sulkily because she thought the sun had no business to be there after the day was done. It's very rude of him, she said, to come and spoil the fun. The spun, the spun, okay. The sun spoiling the moon's fun. <laughs> okay. The sea was wet as wet could be. The sands were dry as dry. You could not see a cloud because no cloud was in the sky. No birds were flying overhead. There were no birds to fly. Ooh, I'm kind of getting like a little bit of a chill here or like it's like anticipation. The walrus and the carpenter were walking close at hand. They wept like anything to see such quantities of sand. If this were only cleared away, they said, it would be grand. If seven maids with seven mops swept it for half a year, something about seven months ago, do you suppose, the walrus said, that they could get it clear? I doubt it, said the carpenter, and shed a bitter tear. Is this really super long? It is super long. Okay, you can forward this, but I feel like I really need to read it. 
So I'm just gonna keep going. So, you know, do that ahead if you want to. <laughs> oh, oysters come and walk with us. The walrus did beseech. A pleasant walk, a pleasant talk along the briny beach. We can do with more than four to give a hand to each, or we cannot do more than four. Did you guys watch the Sagittarius reading? That came up there. To give a hand to each. The eldest oyster looked at him, but never a word he said. The eldest oyster winked his eye and shook his heavy head, meaning to say he did not choose to leave the oyster bed. Now, you guys know the story, right? About what the carpenter and the walrus did to the poor little oysters. But four young oysters hurried up, all eager for the treat. Their coats were brushed, their faces washed, their shoes were clean and neat. And this was odd, because, you know, they hadn't had any feet. <laughs> four other oysters followed them, and yet another four. And thick and fast they came at last, and more and more and more all hopping through the frothy waves and scrambling to the shore. The walrus and the carpenter walked on a mile or so, and then they rested on a rock conveniently low. And all the little oysters stood and waited in a row. The time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things, of shoes and ships and sealing wax of cabbages and kings, and why the sea is boiling hot and whether pigs have wings. Oh, that reminds me of the Ace of Cups, or Knight of Cups card, in um what deck is that i can't remember the name of the deck anyways that's not the point of the name of the deck the point is it reminds me of the knight of cups so this might be something about love but wait a bit the oysters cried before we have our chat for some of us are out of breath and all of us are fat no hurry said the carpenter they thanked him very much for that a loaf of bread, the walrus said, is what we chiefly need. Pepper and vinegar, besides, are very good indeed. Now, if you're ready, oysters dear, we can begin to feed. Oh, this is creepy. I'm getting like this anxiety reading this, even though I know what's going to happen. But not on us, the oysters cried, turning a little blue. After such kindness, that would be a dismal thing to do. The night is fine, the wa raw walrus said. Do you admire the view? It was so kind of you to come, and you are very nice. The carpenter said nothing but cut us another slice. I wish you were not quite so deaf. I've had to ask you twice. It seems a shame, the walrus said, to play them such a trick. After we've brought them out so far and made them trot so quick. Ooh, this is kind of a warning, guys. <laughs> the carpenter said nothing but the butter spread too thick. I weep for you, the walrus said. I deeply sympathize. With sobs and tears, he sorted out those of the largest size, holding his pocket hand handkerchief before his streaming eyes. Oh, oyster, said the carpenter, you've had a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? But answer came there none. And this was scarcely odd because they'd eaten every one. <laughs> Guys. Whoa. That's like... That's intense. And I'm looking at that with the hand and the fool, and it's like, come with us. There's something new for you. There's a treat. See on this bag, it says treat. Just like the walrus and the carpenter said to the oysters. And when you think of the oysters, you know, they hold the pearl, the pearl of wisdom, something special within them. This kind of does relate. I tried to clear the energy, but it does relate to the first reading in a way where uh, that group had somebody that wants something from them. And this too looks like the walrus with the oyster here to me now. Okay. <laughs> Holy shit. Let's keep going. The high priestess with eye and blood. That's good, I feel. Okay. Nine of swords at the bottom. Yeah, that's how I'm feeling right now. No doubt about it. Okay, we're going to get into this and we're going to find out what's going on here. Now, nothing to be nervous about. <laughs> I'm just being dramatic. And if you don't know that I have a flair for a drama, then I mean, hello. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so don't be nervous. Don't be, don't be scared of anything. You're probably not. It's probably just me feeling this. Um, but there is a warning here, okay? 
but it's coming from your higher self, so you can already see this. I'm hearing with open eyes. One second, let me just sit with this for a second. I doubt it's in here, but I want to check to see if walrus is in here. What a different reading we're having. No, it, it seems to be an odd animal. I wonder what the symbolism is. I'll leave that for you to ponder, to think about, or to look up on your own. But I feel like the walrus itself there's something about that uh, image, that symbolism that might mean something to you or lead you somewhere um, where you need to go in your thinking about something. Okay, let's get out one of these cards. Spirit, let's get out an oracle card just to guide this reading. Zombie with control. I thought another one came out, but it didn't. And one of these as well. Seduction, cauldron, and frog. <laughs> Guys, it's like what a witch has put in the cauldron, a frog, right? And it's like it's like someone seducing the frog to go to the cauldron, right? Like the walrus getting the oyster to prepare themselves almost. Okay, so maybe this is you as an oyster. I don't know. Maybe you're the walrus or maybe somebody's thinking they could do this to you. The seduction card says, hear the roaring flames with the masterful trance that calls upon heavy chest. Give into it its alluring grip if you please, but heed my warning of the claws that draw blood without mercy. And we have blood and eye at the end here with the high priestess. There's something that um, is brewing, bubbling, that you can see. And maybe Spirit's asking you, are you doing what you need to do in this situation? Are you taking control of the situation? Or are you letting the situation play out? Don't wallow in misfortune, I'm hearing. Okay, so <laughs> what Spirit wants you to know, we have the trumpet card with the six of cups. The past is calling you or a soulmate might be calling you. There's a nostalgic kind of energy here uh, that you're being reminded of or you're hearing something. Maybe you're hearing music that reminds you of someone or a certain situation in your life. This doesn't have to be about a person. It could be um, your own shadows, your own inner trickster walrus <laughs> that's trying to, I'm hearing, brine you up. Um, Right. Perhaps your memories are getting away with you recently, okay? Or you're not protecting your energy in a way that you should. The past is calling. What are we saying here? The past is calling. I keep thinking these last two cards are the cards that are coming out, but they're not. There's something about... Um, Let's see, I'm looking for something when it's already there, I'm feeling. The hangman, the two of wands, the empress. Whoa, this is like half the deck. The sun, temperance, knight of swords, page of wands, the lovers, five of wands, and six of swords. Okay, immediately I feel like you've moved away from some past conflict here. You got fed up waiting for something or hoping something would turn out a certain way and you just carved out your own path and went forward here. Okay, you made a massive decision here and the, the decision you made wasn't easy. But you decided that you were going to live an abundant life. Okay. So why is the past calling? Why is the past calling? Synchronicity. 
be seeing signs, numbers, door. Interesting. Warning. Okay. I don't know if you can see, but I put a picture of the sandworm up there. And I was just looking for a random picture um, to put on the screen of something beetle juicy. <laughs> and I just saw 3636. And I came across this picture and I thought it was perfect because there's a door there. And that feels very symbolic to me. It's like, what's on the other side of the door? Now, in this instance, you really don't want to open the door. The sandworm's right there to devour you, right? Something that's maybe hiding typically. Well, it's right in front of your face as soon as you open that door. And I'm seeing door warning with synchronicity. So this image is synchronistic here in relationship to this message in some way. Okay, there is... Um, this is kind of similar to group one in some sense, but this feels a little bit more... Uh, uh, paradigm shifting for you, Jupiter. Yeah, it's bigger. There's a bit it, like the warning is bigger, and the warning. I want to be careful of that word warning because it can bring about so many different emotions. You are. Okay, but you maybe don't want to open the door. And the doorbell rang in the previous reading too, or did, was it this one? I can't even remember now. Someone's trying to get you to walk through a certain door, okay? You need to stay in control of the situation because that's what's on the other side of the door. And it's something from your past that's calling you. I'm not sure if this is happening like literally, like literally somebody from your past is coming back around or if this is like all of a sudden you feel a rush of energy from the past. You know, some trauma that you cleared out is suddenly now being triggered in, in this in some way and you're going down that tunnel with it and you don't need to go there there's something like that happening here okay let's keep going how to see through the veil during this next month or during this time we have time and the six of pentacles yeah time. <laughs> this seems like a continuation okay time is going to i'm hearing that song um Time is on my side. Oh, yes, it is. And it reminds me of that movie with Denzel Washington. Uh, they're trying to catch a demon in that movie. And the demon keeps jumping different, like, you know, possessing different people's energy. And they're trying to, like, find out where it is. And the way they can track it in the movie is... It keeps singing that song. And so when somebody passes Denzel Washington by, I haven't seen this movie in ages, but this is a scene that's always stuck out for me. Um, when someone passes him by on the street, they're singing that song and then it will like jump to another person. That person will start singing the song. So I feel like this energy might be... Well, let's see. I, I want to say giving you time. I don't know. What is this energy doing? We have seed of light here, and I want you to know what energy underneath that. You are a seed of light, okay? This is your energy, okay? You're guided, you're protected. Core wound, Aries, and distract. Yeah, it's like a distraction as well, that song in the movie. Don't be distracted by songs, I'm hearing, by songs, interesting. Don't be distracted by um, like some kind of diversion tactic that is taking you away from your light. Oh my goodness. I'm seeing mother there.
there's something about the way somebody made you feel about yourself. Okay, like maybe you felt um, naive after what happened in the past. Or maybe you felt some shame here for being tricked. And I feel like spirit is saying, don't wallow or, or go down. Like, it's good to do shadow work around that. I'm not saying not to, but at this time, it's a distraction to get into those wounds. Okay, to feed those wounds. Because you're, you might be opening a door here. Gemini had a similar kind of message with their reading, but you might be opening a door to something that you really shouldn't open. What should you concentrate on? Pumpkin. That's a symbol of protection. Uncaging the spirit within thou, the fertile power you hold. To taste your buttery velvet, velvet upon tongue is a gift I shall cherish each day that comes. I feel like it's celebrating your power, your wisdom. Don't dip into stories of the past. Apple, risk and reward. Take a risk into your new cycle. You'll be rewarded here. Acceptance and equality. Yeah, I feel like there's something that you definitely should not be speaking about or not um, at this time or not be going back into. Oh, I don't know, guys. I don't know exactly what this is. It's a really difficult energy. I feel like something's um, warring with me almost. <laughs> it's very tempting here to go with the walrus and the carpenter. It's very tempting in some ways, you know, with the Six of Pentacles. They're offering something that maybe you feel like comes once in a lifetime or maybe you feel like it is time to go do this thing or go through this thing. It's not right now. It's, um, the energy's too intense, Nine of Swords. It's too intense. You could do it at another time, just not now, Page of Swords. You have to see something about this first or not see something as well okay okay i'm sorry if this is confusing <laughs> how to protect yourself hand and the fool i'm hearing um well i heard don't bite the hand that feeds you but then i heard don't hand bite the hand that bleeds you because I'm seeing blood here, and that's a song by Fear Factory. Okay, and I feel like be careful of who you, whose energy you're working with and who you take from. Maybe this is clients that you have. Translate this loosely to any area of your life. I feel like ringing this. I don't know, guys. Okay, it's careful of whose energy you take because I feel like that's their mentality. It's like don't don't bite my hand. I fed you something. I gave you something. And so you can't, it's like this, a person has a mentality that you can't turn your back on something here. And so spirit's saying to protect yourself, don't take from people that you have a weird feeling about, okay? Or people who you know will have an expectation that you have to return what they want. And in another sense, I'm getting that maybe you do need to bite a hand that fed you in some way. Oh, boy. Let's get, um, like, give somebody else a warning in some way. Faithful here. Yeah, it's like you've been too faithful to something or somebody wants you to be faithful to them because they gave you something. Tarot. Mm, that came out for the last group too. Bravery. For some of you who are tarot readers, you need to be discerning about who you're reading for. Okay, Not everybody needs to be in your energy and it's okay to say no to somebody. Okay, it's okay. And if they take that personal, that's, that's you know, there are stuff that they have to work through. But, you know, we are working with energy here and, you know, you're protected and all of that stuff. Okay, you, you truly are. As long as you know that, you are. But sometimes people just have a heavy energy or there's just an energy that you just don't want to work with. And it's okay to say no. And I feel like somebody needs to know that. 
Okay, and if that person is in the light, they'll understand it. They won't take it personal because they, they're okay with who they are. It's no big deal. But if somebody's in the shadow or trying to suck something out of you that you don't want to give, they'll be highly reactive to that. Okay? Also remember that you're not in service. You're not here to serve people's demands. Okay, you're in control with the zombie card of what it is you want to do. I know I have a lot of tarot readers here or, or um, yeah, people doing healing work. So I feel like this is a big message here of protection for you, how to protect your energy. And this is in the protect spot here. You have to be brave, you know, you have to be okay with not being liked. You're going to piss some people off, <laughs> okay? And that's just that, I mean... If you're pleasing everybody, you're doing something wrong, <laughs> right? Okay, because, yeah. What else here? Tarot. What else about the tarot? Blessing. It's beautiful. Also, another thing, and I feel like most of you know this, but just in case it needs to be said here because I am receiving this message, you have to activate your readings as well. Like if spirit tells you what could be coming up for you and you hear readings, tarot readings about receiving blessings, you have to be brave to activate those, to manifest those, to participate in that blessing coming towards you, not just to wait. You know, you can't expect them to just come. You're not going to open your mailbox and there's going to be a million dollars there. But, you know, let's let's get realistic here. Okay. Or if or if a reader or your own readings are keep, keep telling you that um, somebody's coming into your life and it's going to be beautiful, but you're doing nothing. You're just sitting at home hiding out. It's like that's just not going to happen. Okay. Tarot can be about reading the potential energies that are here. Okay. Anything else? I feel like that's it. Okay. What do you need to do to continue on your path? We have the key or a key, number 21, and the four of cups. Ooh, the door, the key. Hmm. Maybe you want to watch Sagittarius's reading. Okay, even if you're not Sagittarius, if you feel called to it, check it out. Okay, it was really powerful. We all have Sagittarius somewhere in our chart, and you might be surprised in where, where that is. What house does that rule? You know, that could be a big, powerful house for you. Okay. Let's see here. What is this? What does group need to need to know to continue on their path? Missing pieces. I feel like don't take the first offer that comes your way. Or you might be presented a key to somewhere, but it's a door you shouldn't open. There's a missing key, a missing piece here. Because the Four of Cups is a card about rejection or saying no to something, not taking the key. And this is what you need to do to continue on your path, is to say no to something, to reject something. Confession here. Protection. What's the confession? Um, I, I feel like the confession is not your energy. It's like somebody might want to confess something to you or they have an energy of guilt they're carrying within them. Mm, let me clear this up for a second. What is this about? What is this confession about? Spirit guides, what is the confession about? Seven of Wands, Five of Swords, Death, Strength at the bottom. This is a confession from somebody, or it could be you, uh, but it's a it's a confession of being defensive, um, potentially playing games to protect oneself, or. Um, being manipulative or trying to win in some regard here. But it's an energy of not being open, really pushing something away. And it's like somebody wants to confess 
that they have actually done that or why they did that. But I feel like with the death card here, the key and the four cups, maybe this is a confession you don't even need to hear. Perhaps this confession is a doorway or a key to a door you don't want to open. Hanged man. Yeah, I feel like spirit is saying maybe you've waited for this confession, okay? Or there's something interesting about it. This, and if we're talking about clients, maybe a client wants to confess something, you know, that they have some deep guilt about something and they want to confess it to you via a reading. Do you know what I mean? Right? So maybe they've done something and they want to get a reading on that energy. And in doing that, they're making a confession to you, but they're looking to you as if you're going to absolve them of their guilt. But that's not your job, right? Yeah, I feel like that is for someone there. Okay, so remember that. You can't do that for them. Somebody's looking for, someone's either looking for a key or offering a key that is not good, okay? And you're meant to just hang out in the hangman energy and not engage with this. Contract, yeah. I was asking why. Because in, in entertaining this, in opening the door, taking the key, you're making a contract here, and now we're going back to the beginning with memories. You're making a contract maybe with somebody's karma, okay? Or you're making a contract uh, with somebody from the past. You're starting something up again that you don't need to uh, be involved in. It's an imbalance. You know, you want to separate yourself, I feel like, from this energy. Make that sacrifice of this loss here. For whatever reason, I'm not sure exactly why, but this is what I'm getting all over the place. Fantasy and body. There's something about this that isn't, it's like the walrus and the carpenter. It's a fantasy, right? There's something, I'm seeing mother a few times and grow up there. There's something childish about the situation, okay? Somebody needs to spend time outdoors, but to connect to spirit here, you or them, okay? What do you, did we do that already? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we have extra cards, that's right. What should you honor about yourself? A fetus <laughs> and the magician. Oh, I like this. This is you uh, manifesting stuff. Like honor your, that you're incubating some manifestation. Maybe it hasn't come into its full energy form yet, but it's there, okay? You've done it, it belongs to you. It's just growing right now. Tell me more about this. What should group two honor about themselves? I'm hearing for some of you, not all of you, I'm hearing baby magician, okay. Right, echo. Uh, You've been listening to the right things. You've been echoing the right things. Um, maybe you've been learning the right things. Okay. Something about that. Like echoing the word of spirit or the word of God or what have you. Or the word of the highest light source possible. It's like you've been a channel here. You're right. Deal breaker with chained and magic. Mm. You know how to steer yourself out of bad contracts, shadow contracts, in which you are you get chained to something that you don't want to be chained to. Now, there's all kinds of magic in the world, right? <laughs> okay, and you're in control of what magic you want to be involved in. So remember that. And I feel like you should celebrate your discerning wisdom about what energies you want to involve yourself with and why and how. Don't give your magic away as well, you know, with the oysters, you know, it's like the pearl was their magic, their wisdom, and they were tricked into giving it away by something that seemed very much like a fun treat that came out of nowhere, a door to walk through, you know, make sure that you are keeping up with your discerning, but it's not, 
it's not so much advice. This is what you should be proud of. Like you've already done this. So I guess maybe this whole reading is just a reflection point for you about what's been going on. Maybe confirmation. Spirit sees you, loves you. Respond. Res echo and respond. Interesting. Ele evaluate and connect. See, it's like you're being careful. You're reflecting about who you connect to. You're evaluating this and you have the power to respond, you know, and say, no, thank you. Uh, or sure, I'll take it on, you know? Interesting. Tell me more about this response energy. Some of you might want to respond to difficult energies by echoing their energy back to them. Ooh, that's that's an interesting thing, okay? When someone's trying to take your energy in some way or another and you're onto it, you know that, and you just echo their energy back to them, usually they go away because they don't want more of who they are, more of the same of themselves. They want something they're not, typically. Ten of Pentacles, right? Your success, your stability, your know-how, whatever it is here. So that's a good way to protect yourself as well, is to echo something, an energy back to someone, which doesn't mean take it in as your own. It's just a protective kind of mechanism, a barrier, especially with the Knight of Swords showing up, you know. Right, it's not to be vindictive or manipulative or anything like that. It's just throwing the energy back because you don't want it. It's just returning it to sender. Nice. I like that. That's a big one. And sometimes returning it to sender or sending the energy back is not responding at all. So some of you might want to consider that. Be careful of your responses here to people, how you're responding energetically. Okay, cool. <laughs> Let's get a last card to close this out. These readings were not what I expected at all. At all. Which is always fun. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Black Cat. Fortune meets opportunity. Skull of Darkness. Blind spots. Ooh, there's something fortunate coming in for you that you cannot see. Mm, what is that? Oh, we didn't even do the eye and the high priestess. Okay, candle magic. Ooh, maybe you don't want to, want to watch the first group if you have it. There's something happening with the candle. Speak your breath into its velvet. Recite along its spine all that you desire, all that, would, all that which will unravel. Remember also that you have all the magic within you, okay? You can do whatever you want to do, but... Um, you don't need anybody else to do what you want to do. Let's just put it that way, okay? Be careful as well with what you're doing. You're of the light. And so remember that. We all have dark and light. Mm, ritual, yeah. There's something here. Uh, what do you want to say about that? Ace of Wands. Ace of Pentacles. Mm. It's interesting to help. It's interesting because I chose black candles here for the candle holders only because I usually have white candles, but they didn't fit in those holders, which would have been dangerous, which the black candles I put in originally turned out to be dangerous anyways. Interesting messages there. Uh, but that's why I have black candles there. And I feel like with candle magic coming out and protection and everything we're talking about, there is something to all of that, okay? There really is. And that is something that you might want to consider. But just remain, we have zombie with control here. Just remain in control of your own practice and what you're doing. Okay, I just want to say that, I feel... Give me one last message about, about that. Intentions are a lot. Okay, intentions mean a lot here. Mm. 
I'm hearing angels here. Create, listen. I feel like spirit's guiding you here, knowledge. Yeah, they're giving you some knowledge here on what you need to do um, to achieve what it is you want here. So listen to that and create from source. Create from the divine energies. Okay. Let's see. Okay, yeah. Yay. All right. <laughs> so we have blood, eye, and high priestess. Where did the high priestess go? There she is. What is this message about? I want to put all these cards back in and pull it out. Wow. I feel like I could just be here all day reading. <laughs> I feel like you, whoever I'm talking to, you have really good energy. Okay. It's probably... Um, infectious, contagious, exciting, alluring, high priestess vibes. Okay. Remember how special you are, okay, and what you have to offer here to others. And think about what you want in return. We have 10 and 8, which is 18, the moon card, with the high priestess. I feel like your psychic powers come through um, through your ancestral bloodline here. I feel like something has been passed down to you. Okay, maybe you have, I'm hearing folk magic. Maybe you just have everyday knowledge of things. You don't feel the need to um, practice something in a specific way, perhaps. Or you deviate from tarot card meanings and you go more intuitive. There's something that you just know how to do without being told how to do it kind of thing. I also feel like, um, what a, what can group two see here with the eye? I was just looking at this and thinking, is it the shadow? And then the devil card pops out. Yeah, you can see people's shadows. Okay, which is awesome. I mean, it, sometimes it sucks, but <laughs> overall, you can see what's coming before it comes your way. Six of Wands, and that's how you're able to defeat those energies or be victorious over them, not let them control you, is because you have great insight into what's coming. Okay, so don't, there's a message here about stand in your power, stick to your power, know how powerful you are, and don't let the ego or feelings of insecurity or, or anything like that get you to do something, bend your will, do something that you don't want to do. Because that's not you. Yeah, four of cups, you know how to say no here. Anything else with the blood, the devil? Seven of swords. And the high priestess, eight of swords. say when people try to mess with you in some way or another it doesn't really turn out well for them <laughs> I just want to say that nor should it okay Why do you need to know that? Maybe you feel bad about that in some ways here. You don't have to give away all your secrets to like all your secret wisdom and knowledge. You don't have to give that away. I'm hearing that. And know that you removed yourself from something quite easily. 
okay, actually quite easily. And understand that that's part of your, the fool here, that's part of your magic, is your ability to remove yourself from situations when you choose to. Something like that. Okay, I don't want to get too much further into that, but whoever you are, and you're still here, you're still listening, you are super powerful. And Spirit really wants you to recognize how powerful you are and not give in to lower, you know, vibrations or give away your energy unnecessarily. And to know that you can defeat any kind of deception or trickery, like it's really not a problem for you. It's just a matter of whether you decide to respond from a place of power and control or not. And you know, sometimes living in this matrix world, we can get tricked into thinking that we need to respond in these ways so as to not hurt other people's feelings. But that's like, I don't know guys, that's not really the point of your power here, right? Energy, seed of light. You're a seed of light. I This keeps coming out. Okay. So protect that. Know how to work with that in ways that benefit you. Something about your maternal line maybe. Some of you are forgiving your mother. Okay, let's see. Any last messages here? The book. One more. The book, the rat, the rope, the volcano. Yeah, it's like when you cut cords, the door. Ooh. When you cut cords with people, it's it's felt. Okay? It's a shockwave. It's felt. And it gets written down in the Akashic Records. And you also have access to this, right? You know what to do. And that's why it's easy for you to do the things that you need to do. I mean, energetically. It might not be you know, consciously or egoically, but energetically, it's pretty easy for you to see the right path here with the eye. It does cause shock waves. What about the door? What about the door? Hag. <laughs> okay. Foot and herb. The hag is like super powerful, right? She doesn't give a shit what anybody thinks about her. She's in her full power. And I was just listening to uh, an intuitive healer talk about, well, that's, that's her teaching, so I'll, le I'll leave that. But the Hag archetype there, hmm, number 333, <laughs> is the right door to walk through. It's the door of knowing how powerful you are, accepting that, and not caring how other people perceive you. As long as you're not hurting anybody, then you're good to go, okay? Be okay with being a little bit, I'm hearing brittle? <laughs> being a little bit brittle, being ugly at times, being harsh at times, being unliked at times. Be okay with that. You think the hag gives a damn about any of that? <laughs> how people like see her? No, she's too busy creating magic. Magic is afoot here. There's no time for that matrix world. Frog, yeah, she's collecting the things she needs to do to make what she wants. Okay, I'm, I gotta end this, spirit. Yeah, okay, we're gonna end it there. I feel like you are, you know, really breaking ties with your ego here in terms of um, seeing yourself through the eyes of the ego. You're not doing that anymore. You're seeing yourself through the eyes of your soul and your magic, your ability to transform, your ability to stand up for yourself, to be fierce when you need to be fierce. 333 three, three is how we're ending it, so I'll leave it there. I love you guys so much. Whoa, what a reading on Halloween. I'll see you next time.